So, you know, when we look at the impediments to growth, the, the, the greatest impediment we find is ineffective communication. So we look at the operational performance of the organisation, we look at what the experiences are that the customers are having, and invariably we find that the customers are having pretty good experiences. When we look at the non-customers and ask about what their perceptions are of that organisation, we find that they have dramatically different perceptions than what the customers are experiencing. So we understand that it's the perception experience. So if you want to gain market share, you have to be infinitely more effective in your communication. But it's this area here that I've highlighted that is lawless. Lawless. And yet it should have rigour in it. It's the part of the marketing process that has little or no rigour. So let's all get scientific about looking at uh, media spend, let's get scientific about how much to budget, but then, then let's just mistakenly believe that the creativity part, which we know is lawless, can be extended to the planning stage as well. So marketers should be imposing content. What should be the content? The content should be those drivers that are causing outcomes, causing market share to change. The academic journals have been full of these methods since the 1940s and 50s, but they have not made their way into business. And as we see big data and analytics increasingly coming into organisations, we still see you know, that advertising is no better than a toss of a coin. In fact, advertising is not as good as a toss of a coin. And unless we bring rigour to that process, it'll continue to be a random event. But what it should be, it should be a lawful game of skill. And the skills reside in, 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 in you know, many, many people that are out in the community who have been educated in this area that can develop causal models to help us to understand what are the hierarchical drivers of why people buy this product, this brand, in this category? And what are they both emotionally and are they rationally? And then taking the top couple of drivers and then building them into the creative. So we bring this down to this, this uh, triple play. Uh, and the triple play is, you now what is the emotion, what are the rational drivers? Now, we would always contend that you must have a price message. We always need to be communicating price. We always need to have the buyers believing we're price competitive. So we're gonna teach them that and make them feel. And the reason we wanna teach them is because there is going to be some cognitive learning required. So ask yourself, if this is all known, if we understand these things, if, if, if the academic uh, uh, books, the journals have been telling us this from the 50s, that we can actually predict how people behave, if we've understood now in the more recent past um, how we can measure emotion and, and the role of emotion, then why aren't we adopting this? We've all had those experiences, you know, where we've tried and it actually hasn't helped. But we've seen that organisations have been able to continue to improve and improve and that this process is terrific and fine, but it can't keep on being left out of the march forward of, of quantitative analytics in business. And at the moment, it is not even getting a seat at the table. And you know, how many ads are, are, are failing? How many campaigns are failing? I know that there's people in this room that are shifting uncomfortably in their seats as they think about the, the intuition that's being used, the hippo, the Freudian hippo intuition that's being used to determine what is the content. And so this talk has been about what should be the content of our communications. Thank you very much indeed.